Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm doing a makeover on this Matchbox Lesney number 46B removals van, which were first built in 1960. Now I'll just give it a quick once over. I'm looking at this thing here and I'm thinking, hang on, there's something missing at the back here, like some wheels and axles, that's not good. The paint job's pretty awful. Uh, on a plus side though, looking in the cabin here, hmm, everything seems in order there. And uh, these wheels here are pretty good. And axle, I can reuse those, no worries. I just gotta take some of this junk out the back first. And then I'll get on with the restoration. Okay, uh, I've got to remove the base of this thing. I'm going to have to make a new axle and find some tyres for this, the same size. I'm going to take the base off. There's no screw on this model, so there'll be no drilling today. The base is held on by this uh, spread, these spread legs and uh, the little tab at the back there. So to remove it, I'm just going to use some long nose pliers and just uh, deform these little legs here at the front just a little bit because I want to reuse them afterwards and now with a small flat bladed screwdriver I'm just prising the base off very gently so I don't damage anything that was quite easy now I drag it forwards and that little tab at the back disengages from the slot and the base is off now we can have a look at it pretty ordinary there's only actually two parts to this model if you disregard the wheels and the axles and here is a close-up of the mechanism that holds the base on. Now it's time to remove the axle and wheels. I use my little cylindrical grindstone on my Dremel to do this by just wearing away at the burr on the end of the axle and then pulling the wheels off like that. It's very easy and uncomplicated and works every time. Now I need to source some wheels for the back axle. So I'm looking through my box of wheels and I think I found some that are the right size. They look almost identical. But uh, I'm just checking as Matchbox bought out so many different sized wheels that it gets quite confusing. And as you can see, although these look the same, they're actually like a millimetre bigger than I want. Right, here's the original axle and wheel and I'm having to use these uh, pliers as a small hammer to try and drive this axle out because for some reason it's jammed in there. Probably somebody's painted this wheel in the past and it's gummed up. Here's some other wheels I managed to find after a little bit more searching and you know what these are just perfect size so I'm going to go ahead and use these. Just one problem the hole in the middle is very slightly smaller so I'm just going to have to drill that out to make the axle fit. Here's some shot glasses that I use for mixing up paint. So I'm getting those out because I'm going to try and match the paint now before I take the old paint off. I snap these coffee stirrers in two and automatically I've got twice as many as I need. I also use some of these uh, cotton buds to put the paint that I blend onto the model to see if it's the right colour. So to mix the green paint I used uh, Mr Hobby number 46 emerald green with a bit of deep green Tamiya, which is XF26, believe it or not, and they turned out pretty good. The light green that you see in this camera shot was not used. I just put it there because I thought I might have needed it, but I, in the end I didn't. So using this little cotton bud here, I'm just spreading a little bit of paint on the body, and I'm trying to compare it with the remnants of the 
original paint that are still on the body there. Now part of me suspects that this vehicle has been painted darker green by somebody else before me. Uh, I'm going to go and check on the internet now to see if there's any other reference material I can source to find out what colour this should be. So I do a Google image search for the Pickford's Matchbox Man and I pull up all these different pictures but the green is not as green as the, the green that I'm looking at on the model. I'm going with my gut instinct here so I've made up this green colour that I think is close to the original. I'm putting some tape on the top of the shot glass there to keep it fresh until it's time to spray the model. Next it's time to paint strip the model. There's not much paint on this one but I am using this poly stripper paint stripper that I always use. So I apply it with just a spare paintbrush that I have, a cheap one. And I'm doing the inside as well as the outside because if the rear roller door is open, people may be tempted to look inside. And the inside's got to look as good as the outside of this model. And after I've let it do its thing and the paint is blistered, it's ready to be removed. I then immerse the model in a bath of warm soapy water and remove the loosened paint with a spare toothbrush that I have available. First of all I do the base, uh, closely followed by the body. I have at my disposal a bunch of dental tools that one of my subscribers uh, sent to me which is fantastic. I don't know what I did before I had them. They are excellent for removing tiny little scraps of paint that haven't been removed via the paint stripping process. A quick rub over with this soft brass brush also helps in bringing up the finish on the base and preparing it for the undercoat. But before then I give both the body and the base a once over with some steel wool. Now having a look at this model here you can see there's no dents or scrapes or damage to it which is always a good thing. So now I'm on to the undercoating. To hold the parts whilst I'm spraying them, I use these um, surgical forceps. Some people call them hemostats, and there's all different sorts of names for them, but I'm calling them forceps. There's always a part on the model where you can grip them, and it doesn't matter if there's no paint applied to this area because it won't be seen in the finished product. I'm using this Tamiya Fine Surface Primer so that I don't obscure any of the details on the casting. I switch on my fan to extract the overspray out of the window and away I go. Just a couple of light coats is all it takes. Remember, if you put too much on, you run the risk of obscuring the details. As I said, there's only two major parts to this model, so it's quite a quick job. After I spray the parts, I attach them to these magnetic clips and allow them to dry. Whilst they're drying, I thought I might tidy up these tyres. These are the two that I found to replace the missing ones. I noticed they have a little bit of blue paint on them. So I'm going to use some of this Castrol brake fluid and a cotton bud to remove the blue paint. This is a little wheel cleaning rig that I made from a block of wood and a small nail in it. It just helps to hold the tire in place whilst I'm cleaning it. 
takes a little time for the brake fluid to start dissolving the paint. But eventually it comes off and the tyres look like they should do, all black again. The finishing touch on these tyres is to give them a light wash of tyre black. To do this I use an old sanding block and four toothpicks. The tyre wash is made up of Tamiya X1 gloss black and some Tamiya thinners. I just paint it on using a soft brush and let them dry and it makes the tyres look almost new. Here's a good opportunity to look at some of the details on this model. There's a little fuel filler cap there and a locker and the door and there's even a little step there for the driver to get in. On this side it's almost the same except there's no fuel filler cap. There is some uh, sticker index marks on here that I think were used in the factory when putting the original stickers on. The front end is quite detailed, it has a radiator grill and two lights. And at the top there you can just make out three letters G-U-Y. Today for the base I'm using this aerosol can of black satin paint. I've used it before and the finish turns out quite good. When it comes to just plain black, I find it's more efficient to use it straight out of a spray can rather than making my airbrush dirty. I know what you're thinking, it looks a bit thick here, but when it dries, the finish improves quite dramatically. Now it's time for me to use my top coat color that I made earlier. As you can see, this has stayed fresh in the pot and it's like 24 hours later. Some people put on multiple thin coats. I like to put on a few thick coats, especially a nice wet coat at the end to try and get it to gloss up without the use of any, without the use of any top coat varnish. After I've painted it, I place it underneath this glass bowl so it can dry in a dust free environment. For the axles, I'm using these 3.2 millimeter blind rivets. To begin with, I remove the rivet collar because that's going in the bin as I don't need it. All I'm interested in is the long piece. And this is what I'm going to make into an axle. Here for comparison, you can see it alongside an original axle. I've got to make the head a little bit smaller. So to do this, I run it on my Dremel. I've got this cylindrical grindstone here, the one I use for removing the axles. And I'm using it here to reshape the end to resemble an original sized axle end. I'm quite happy. With that done, I now finish it off by running it finally in the cup end of the attachment, just to round it off a little bit more naturally. There, that's better. Now it's starting to look like an original axle. There's just one more thing to do. Using my power drill, and some emery paper, I just shine the end up using some emery paper. I'm now doing a test fit of the wheels and axles and I'm going to cut the axles to length before I go out to my shed to reform the end of the axles and secure the wheels onto the model. You need to cut them so there's enough material left over to deform using the drill press. The axles should not be so short as to allow the drill press to touch the tyres during the forming of the hubcap end. It's important to grip the axle using some small pliers to prevent it from spinning. If it spins, it will resist forming the end of the axle. That looks quite good. After doing the other one, I can see they run quite freely. 
and they look just like the original axle ends. Now it's time to assemble the model. I have to engage this tab in a slot on the back of the body, there, and I have to engage these two little ears on this piece of metal into the slot on the base at the front there. Before I assemble the two parts, I've got to put the roller door in. So I position it at the back and it needs to be kind of half open or half closed. And then I can place the base into position. I have to press quite firmly here to get the front end to lock in. That's why I've got the gloves on, so I don't leave any fingerprints on the model. And also while I'm doing it on a piece of cloth. There, I think it's done. I just turn it over and give it a shake to make sure the vase is on securely and the roller door functions as it should. Look at that, beautiful. Only one last thing to do now, put the decals on the sides. I source these decals online. They are water slide decals and have to be immersed into water before they can be used. Before that though, I cut them to size using some scissors and do a test fit once again to make sure that they are not oversized. One of my subscribers suggested using a sponge to moisten the decals, rather than chasing them around in a pool of water. Well it's not working out too well for me at the moment, so I end up getting rid of the sponge and going back to my old technique where I just have them floating in the water. To prepare the model for the transfer, I place a little bit of water onto it using a cotton bud. This will allow the decal to slide into position and give me a chance to alter the position if necessary before it sets. So once it's separated from the backing sheet, it's a simple case of holding it into position with one finger and dragging the backing sheet out using the tweezers. When I'm happy where it is, I use a cotton bud to squeegee out all the excess moisture from beneath the sticker. Okay, well that sticker went on quite successfully, so now I've just got to do the other one using the same method, and then the model is finished. So here's a reminder of what we started with. It had no roller door, no rear wheels, and pretty much no paint. This thing was fit for the bin. Well, I could see some potential in this, so I gave it my best shot. And this is what it looks like now. With a fresh coat of paint, new decals, spruced up wheels, new axles, front and rear, and a reproduction roller door. This thing looks factory fresh once again. For those who are interested, I used a new product today, a Molotov chrome pen for the grill and headlights. And I was not particularly happy with the results. It seemed to go on too thick and it hid a lot of the definition of the radiator. So I don't think I'll be using it again. This was the second Pickford's removals van that I'd done. The previous one was blue and had grey wheels. Here, for your enjoyment, I display them both together so you can see the differences in the models. Thank you for watching this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Please come back soon as there are plenty more in the pipeline. So until then, goodbye. Oh.